Hi, this is Father Bill W. here in Austin, Texas, and I want to welcome you uh, back to the podcast. Uh, I've been in sobriety, celebrated 46 years last December in the program of Alcoholics Anonymous, and uh, about 26 years ago, I got real interested in the history of AA, uh, particularly the Oxford group where uh, AA came from, started studying the uh, the principles, the practices, the uh, literature, and um, I think the thing that really uh, struck me the most was the practice of two-way prayer that they used to do back then. And so we've started a website on that. That's the name of it, twowayprayer.org. Uh, I invite you to go visit that. And uh, also, if you're on Facebook, try to follow me on Father Bill W. This series that we're doing now is on the 12 steps. We're going back to the history, looking at it, seeing how perhaps an understanding of the history can help uh, people to better work the program, get a better grasp of what the the spiritual changes are that are happening uh, maybe beneath the surface, so kind of open them up and take a look at what's going on inside, but from the point of view of the history. Eh? So um, we are uh, up to step seven, uh, humbly asked him to remove our shortcomings. Uh, I guess the spiritual principle we have to identify there uh, jumps right out at us. It's humility, uh, probably something that uh, not too many of us are uh, have as a strong suit. It's the shortest of uh, all of the 12 steps, and, and perhaps it's the simplest, uh, but it's maybe the deepest one of all in terms of uh, really a, a richer understanding of what's, what's happening inside of it. But before uh, getting into step seven, I want to do what we usually do, just a quick review of how we got here. Uh, why are we, uh, you know, um, uh, humbly asking him to remove our shortcomings? Uh, you can't just start in midair. So uh, go back to step one. It's, it's an experience that we had of hopelessness, that uh, we tried staying sober and, and were unable to do it, had to have help. That help had to come from a source outside of us. Step two, um, the hope, uh, the hope that perhaps there existed a spiritual path that was uh, going to open up this help to us. Um, three, we asked God, uh, if there is a God, uh, to help us to do this. Uh, so we, we turn our life and our will over to his care that's the wording. Uh, and then we begin a real examination of ourselves. What are the things that are separating us from God? And this is really where the four absolutes of the Oxford group start to come in. Um, the people in the early days, uh, that was the program or a, a huge chunk of it. And so they, they examined their lives from the perspective of those four standards. Were they honest? Were they, were they loving? Were they unselfish? Was, were, were they pure? Uh, and, and they wrote down uh, where they were not. And then in step five, they shared that uh, with another individual uh, as they kind of came to uh, an experience of, of, of the truth. They, they dropped the mask and begin letting people in to, in to see what was going on inside. In step six, we meet the absolutes. Bill Wilson said this is where he put them. He put them into steps six and seven. And so uh, we went into them in, in pretty good detail uh, in the last episode under step six. Here I want to do something a little bit different. I, wanna, I want to uh, I wanna place them more within the context of the whole Oxford group program. So um, again, humbly asked him, to remove our shortcomings. I'll start with uh, tackling a couple of uh, words that we run into in step six and seven, defects of character and shortcomings. Uh, I've been to many, many meetings over the years where that was the discussion topic. What's the difference between uh, shortcomings and defects of character? Well, if you study the history uh, in the original manuscript, uh, Bill wrote the word sins. And uh, the manuscript was gone over, and it was uh, tried to remove many of the Christian principles and, and, and terminology so that it didn't scare poor alcoholics off uh, right from the start. 
So um, in, in another piece, he said, uh, you know, why, why did he use the difference? What's the difference between the words? And he said, there's no difference. I didn't want to repeat the same word twice. So to understand uh, what we're talking about here, we're talking in the Christian framework of the word sins. And, and that does scare people. You, you can't say that S word in many 12-step meetings. Uh, I never do. Uh, but, but you have to understand it. And I think if you understand it, uh, maybe it won't be quite as scary to us. Sin is this. It's anything that blocks me from God, anything that blocks me from you, anything that blocks me from my true self. So it's that thing that gets in the way of who we are and how our relationships ought to function. Um, Frank Bookman uh, used, used to say that he worked with uh, constipated Christians, that they were blocked in some way. And that, and that word comes up a lot um, in the big book, uh, found a couple of references for it. It says, uh, page 64, we had to face and be rid of the things in ourselves that had been blocking us. 71, uh, we hope you are convinced now that God can remove whatever self-will has blocked you off from him. 72, we have been trying to get a new attitude, a new relationship with our creator, and to discover the obstacles, call out the, the blockages to our path. 72, uh, here's, here's Sam Shoemaker, who... Uh, Wilson claimed helped him understand, or or he was the author of, uh, not in words, but in spirit, uh, steps 2 to 11. Here's Shoemaker saying, uh, we must remove the blocks, whatever keeps us from a living, loving relationship with other people, or a vital and open relationship with God, is sin. So, I think it's really helpful if, if we understand that, that what we're attempting to do through the 12-step process, or most of the steps anyway, is to remove the blockages that exist between us and God, between us and our true selves, and between us and other people. Um, and, and, and the problem, just like the, the big book says, uh, is self in its various forms, the way we attach ourselves to uh, uh, a screwed up image of self. Um, and that's, that's what sin is about. So when the Oxford group people used to, used to write sin, they would write uh, small s, capital I, great big I, and then a small n. So it's the I, it's the selfishness, it's the self-centeredness, it's actually the wrong self, the false self, that we wind up identifying with. And if you want to really understand what's going on in, in the program or in any spiritual transformation, it is the removal of, that, of the blockages that keep us from the true self, which uh, really is inside. Big Book says the great reality is within. I think that's uh, absolutely right. So the Oxford group people, uh, they went by some funny names. They called themselves uh, life changers, soul surgeons. They were interested in developing a program that could cut out that sin, cut out those blockages, and open people up uh, to who they truly were. Uh, they wanted to do it on an individual scale, then on a community scale, and then on a national and world scale. They were out to change the whole world. Bill Wilson was only interested in changing alcoholics, but he took their program, their practices, and their principles, and he began using those to affect deep, deep change in, um, in people. So, um, uh, you know, the big book has a, an expression in there. It says, we were reborn. You know, as this, as this program has its effect on us, that is really what's happening. We're undergoing a tremendous transformation, and we are reborn. It's too bad that that word has been kind of co-opted by 
a lot of right wing politics these days. You say I'm, I'm born again. Uh, it, it signifies some political beliefs that uh, really have nothing to do with what the the real understanding of that phrase ought to be. It's really the death of the old self and the birth of a new one. So how do we get born again? Well, that's something that uh, um, uh, Carl Jung was very interested in. Uh, he had a patient that most of you will know by, by the name of Roland Hazard. And uh, he tried working with Roland, tried helping him, and he could only get him so far. And then he relapsed. And, and then he had that wonderful conversation that is so important to our history. He said, uh, Roland, you have to undergo a, a, a spiritual conversion, a psychic change, have a conversion experience. And he sent him out and Roland went in search of that. And he found it uh, in the Oxford group. So um, that, that, that's kind of some background to what this step six and seven, the deeper elements of them are really about. See, we identify the blockages in, in step four. These are the things that are really killing me. We share that in step five. Then in six, we become willing to have these removed. And then seven, we humbly ask God to do that. In the Akron, um, uh, what became AA uh, back in 35 through 39, before the big book came out, there were really two uh, surrenders that individuals ha had. The Oxford group, uh, usually there were not two. There was usually one. They were introduced to the Ox you know, the Oxford principles of uh, honesty, purity, and selfishness and love, and they had to come to terms with them, and their surrender involved them. Well, with us, it, it kind of took two surrenders. <laughs> That's pretty understandable. The first one became uh, became the third step, and that was done in the hospital. Um, you know, so the, the man is, um, you know, three, five, five days sober and, um, uh, and, and he gets on his knees with Dr. Bob and, um, and, and he does a prayer, you know, God, if, if you exist, please help me. I surrender my, my drinking problem to you. Um, and then after he's, uh, had the cobwebs clear out a little bit, they often talked in the in the, some of the early AA literature uh, about a second surrender, uh, a real surrender, they called it, a deeper surrender. And that was when the individual was introduced to the four absolutes. And then he was asked to do another surrender, uh, to, to really invite God into his life at the deepest of levels. And I think that is the tradition that we're carrying over in steps six and seven. Um, we do the initial surrender in three, but now in what Wilson later wrote, the step that separates the men from the boys, it's do you want a real conversion? Do you want a full conversion? Are you willing to uh, really go to all of the lengths necessary to remove the blockages that are there in, uh, in your life? I think, you know, to, to say that the absolutes are the whole program uh, would be a misstatement. Uh, they were not. And I think they are best understood, uh, or, or the program is best understood, if you put two things together. One, I think, would be the, the four absolutes. Uh, but the second one that doesn't get as much attention as those are something that was called the five C's. And they were confidence, confession, conviction, conversion, and continuance. And the story behind those is this, that uh, Frank Bookman was on his way back, the originator of the Oxford group. He's on his way back from China. <clears throat> he's on a steamship and he's talking to a woman on deck and, uh, and, and telling her about the program that he's developing. Uh, had all the seeds of the, of the 12 steps, you might say. And she uh, said, well, it, it, it's too complicated, Dr. Uh, Bookman. Um, could you give it to me very simply? And so he went down to his cabin and, and prayed about this and tried to come up with a simple explanation of the program. 
And I think if, if we look at that, we can, we can maybe see the four absolutes nestled right in the middle of those. So I, I want to try, uh, ho I hope this is helpful for you. So uh, be looking at the whole program in this, so this whole program of how do you affect change in an individual. And so the first C is confidence. You gain the confidence of the new person. Uh, it isn't going to be your brilliance. It isn't going to be the, the wonderful words of the big book that just turns somebody around. Somebody is going to see something happening in you, or you are going to see something happening in somebody else. And, and if you engage that person, go to great lengths to really pay attention to him, to let him know he's important, you are going to gain his or her confidence. And, and Bookman said, no great change is going to happen if, if, if you don't go through that stage with someone. Um, and the second one is confession. And it starts with the individual who is out to change the other person. He confesses his sin to the new person so that, so that the new person becomes more willing, comfortable, able to reach down in himself and start getting honest. That was the thing that blew me away when I first came into AA. I saw people... Uh, who were being honest. And I had grown up with a family of liars, and I had surrounded myself with lies. I didn't know how to do life without lying. And here were people letting those barriers down. So uh, that, that confession, those honest discussions, uh, we call it uh, step five. Uh, they didn't have steps, so they didn't really have a name for it. But that was their process. You know, confess your sins one to another uh, in, in, in the letter of James. That, that was the scripture that they looked to. Now, here is where we're getting into six and seven. Um, conviction is the third C. An awareness of my separation, a genuinely deep appreciation of what is going on inside of me that is wrong. Conviction of of my sins, of my blockages, of my separation, of my falseness. All right? Yeah. And that's, that's, that's part of that step six, becoming entirely ready. Okay? And then the conversion. You know, uh, and this isn't going to necessarily happen in exactly in six and seven, but if you look at the process, it is what is happening. A conversion. It is that psychic change. It is, it is the creation of a new self. It is the death of an old self and the creation of a new one. Uh, it is the conversion experience that Jung sent Roland in search of. And you're not going to get that just by going to meetings and saying slogans. You're going to get it by changing at the, at the deepest levels possible. Um, and then the, the fifth C is continuance, that they were going to stay with a man or woman who they had introduced to this program. They were going to stay with them until that person was then out there doing this changing with others. So, you know, it isn't just take what you like and leave the rest and, you know, it's up to you. No, if you started someone on this process of change, you had a commitment to them and you would stay with them. Uh, uh, Dr. Bob was the prince of, uh, Bill called him the, you know, the, the prince of uh, 12 steppers. Uh, he loved his people. He stayed with his people. Uh, he prayed with his people. Uh, his wife did uh, two way prayer, uh, with the people at the house and they entered into a close relationship until they were ready to launch, you know, to go back to Detroit, to go back to Cleveland, to go back wherever they came from. And now carry this message uh, to other people. So th those are the are are the five C's. And uh, so so I, I want to stay with this change, this this conversion experience. Uh, the big book, I believe, it, it, when it when it talks about you know we were we were catapulted into the fourth dimension of existence. I think that fourth dimension of existence that it's talking about 
is what it feels like to come from this changed state. That, that once the barriers, the blockages are removed, the true self begins to come out. And it feels wholly new. Uh, because it, and, and yet it feels old. <laughs> Let me contradict myself. Because it's actually who we are. So it's, it's, it's that feeling of, um, my God, where has this been all my life? Why, why haven't I gotten here sooner? Well, you know, it takes what it takes, uh, but hopefully uh, we do get there. And um, I would that we stay there. It's not been my experience. Uh, it's, a, it's a going back and forth. But I tell you this, once you've been there, uh, you're not going to settle for anything less. And once you've been there, uh, alcohol and drugs are not going to have the appeal that they used to have. What you are going to find is um, is a lot of challenges, a lot more dying that has to happen to myself. Um, uh, so that so that the surrender is not just a one-time deal; it's a deepening. It's almost a daily um, uh, surrender process that I really have to go through, and those we will meet in steps 10, 11, and 12, because that, I think, is where the action is. All right, very quickly, I want to introduce you to, um, um, uh, not in person, but uh, uh, by through reading, a fellow by the name of Robert Johnson, who was a uh, Jungian therapist. And he talks about, in his book, Transformation, about the fourth level of consciousness. And uh, let, let me just pick it up here. Here's what he writes. For most people, the transition <clears throat> from three-dimensional to four-dimensional consciousness is exceedingly painful. Ain't that the truth? Medieval Christianity called it the dark night of the soul. Dante called it the journey through hell. It was 40 days and 40 nights in the desert for Jesus. It was a journey in the belly of the fish for many a hero. This is, in fact, the hero's journey. This is, this is the journey that Jesus went on. This is the journey that Abraham went on, that Moses went on, that uh, Martin Luther King went on, that every change agent has to go through. For a modern man, it is a midlife crisis or worse, a nervous breakdown or still worse, physical suicide. The process can be summed up in one sentence. And this is the sentence when I first read it. It just grabbed my attention because it was so much like what's, it's what's really in the big book. It is the relocating of the center of the personality from the ego to a center greater than oneself. The relocation of the center of the ego from the personality uh, or you know, from, from the ego state, uh, the usual personality state, the old self, to a new one. This superpersonal center has been variously called the self, capital S, Jungian, eh? the Christ nature, the Buddha nature, superconsciousness, cosmic consciousness, Satori and Samadhi. This relocation appears to be death when viewed from the perspective of the ego. My God. You know, I'm going to become the hole in the donut, was the expression. What will be left of me? Zen masters observe that Satori can be uh, viewed by the ego as nothing but total disaster. And death it is. The ego loses its supremacy and goes through a short time of violent suffering. When someone threatens suicide at this time, Johnson writes, I caution him that he must be very careful to do it without harming his body. The relocation of the center of the personality is a form of suicide, and it is best done by the ego. One Zen master in Los Angeles once said to his client, why don't you die now and enjoy the rest of your life? <laughs> Sounds like a tough sponsor. We listen, listen to the end, of, to the other side of this, though. Uh, when the dark night begins to lift, when the change begins to happen, you know, uh, when we hit our bottom and then go through this transformation that we call the steps, 
One morning, there is an unaccountable touch of joy in the air. This is the first contact with the four-dimensional consciousness, and one can begin to live from that source of energy. Something of the subtle inner world be becomes your center of gravity. Poetry, music, a new perceptiveness when you are jogging. Whoo! That's the fourth dimension of existence, all right? Uh, that's the joy, the real joy of recovery that, that doesn't come by getting, getting, getting a new car and lots of money. It's all good stuff, but it's really what comes from finding the deepest you and the you that you've been separated from all of your life. Now, listen to this. He finishes up. Less worthy channels of this new energy. The channels that don't work are fanaticism, dictatorial religious beliefs, and ego inflations of all kinds. And those are the things that we are subjected to. Those are the temptations that are going to come along. And if we go down those routes, uh, we're going to lose that fourth dimension. Here's what Johnson finishes up with. If the new energy flows into such channels, you are quickly sent back for further boiling in the oil of transformation. So I've been sent back many, many times <laughs> for a little more boiling in the, in that, in that oil. Hey, um, you know, and that's and that's that's the spiritual growth, the spiritual progress that that we make. It's not that we are utterly transformed, and that's it. Uh, I'm born again, and lucky me, and lucky you to have me in your life. Nonsense. We are we are spiritual pilgrims uh, who who uh, uh, are going deeper and deeper into uh, an understanding of really what unmanageability means and what it is life like to have God uh, manage our lives for us. It's a wholly different experience, and it's really filled with humility. And humility is the key uh, to, to, to what we need to gain and hold on to in sufficient quantity to stay sober. You know, uh, you can lose a little, you will lose a little, I'll promise you that, but hang on to enough that... Uh, you get your butt back into the chairs and back into being open to teaching. So the seventh step prayer. Um, my creator, I am now willing that you should have all of me, the good and the bad. You know, the, the bad is probably more real than the good. And so when that bad surfaces, uh, when my shadow parts come up, those are what I have to give to God, you know? And that's what he's there waiting for. I pray that you now remove from me every single defect of character, every shortcoming, every sin that stands in the way of my usefulness to you and my fellows. Grant me strength as I go out from here to do your bidding. So um, kind, of a, kind of a quickie look at, uh, at step seven, at the humility element uh, in there. Uh, many other things to look at um, to approach it. But that is, to me, uh, a huge part of the spiritual journey. And that's why uh, the, the four absolutes are so central uh, to the ongoing two-way prayer process. That in step 10, I watch. I watch myself as these... Uh, re-emerge, and um, in 11, I pray, and in step 12, I act. So, hope this has been helpful. Thank you for listening. Uh, God bless, and keep coming back.